welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. So today I'm back in the craft room. I've been organizing and we're back with our kind of craft room clear up, I guess. It's still looking pretty tidy in here, but based on your questions and comments from the other day, I wanted to dive in to my stamp and die storage. So I actually keep it in those white cabinets you saw me organize at the weekend. And the bottom two drawers look like this over here. And it's pretty crude system, it's nothing special. These are kitchen cabinets from Ikea. And Greg put me some cardboard dividers in. And when I was at Ikea the other day, I found these, which actually are part of the uh, kitchen system. They are little tubs that actually hook on the side and in here I can keep all of my dividers that I pre-cut out of plastic folders. And um, Miss Ali had a great idea of getting a non-slip rug underlay from the dollar store and putting this in the bottom of my drawers so that all of my stamps would stop moving around. I haven't put it in place yet, but I think it's an awesome idea. I can't wait to do it. So that will be going in the bottom of my drawers to stop everything moving around. But this is how I store them. I store them alphabetically by brand. So you've got Alta New here, Art Impressions, Avery Owl, Concord and Ninth. There is this little pot at the front here, which I'm going to slide out for a second. And these are all my Darcy's tin pins because my Darcy's section is somewhere around here. It's back here. And then I have my Ellen Hudson die, stamps and dies. Now my stamps and dies all get stored together in here. And then down the bottom here, we have... What do we have? We've got Kindred Stamps, Lawn Fawn, and this is the Lawn Fawn section that I was organizing Maddie's birthday the other day. So I went through, and my intention is to organize all of my stamps like this. So I redid it, and so I have like a Halloween section, a Critters section, there's Basic Shapes, there is um, How You Been, Reveal Wheel. So I pre-segregated within my lawn form, particularly as I have A, so much lawn form, and B, they have all of the different interactive things. I could put all of those interactive sections together. Um, and then I have a lot, a lot, a lot of my favorite things. There's a small part of my favorite things back here. So you can see here, my favorite things. But my my favorite things spills over into drawer number two here. So my favorite things also kind of takes up all of this as well. So I really need to go through my favorite things and do exactly the same thing. And then you've got Pretty Pink Posh. You've got a big waffle flower section at the back here. And as I say, these are just cut down Amazon boxes. So there's nothing special about my dividers and I like to have space to expand. The bottom drawer is completely tonic because of course I have a lot of tonic products with all the work we do for them. So they get their own special drawer. But when I actually categorize and store my products, there's a couple of top tips I wanted to share with you. So envelope wise, um, the Ulta New, I like to use their own envelopes because I can fit those backers in here. Um, I did do a video before about the different envelopes I use, but I really like the Avery L envelopes. Although I do buy, when it comes to the really small square ones, and of course I can't see any that fit in there now. Let me see what I can find here. Um, find a small stamp set from Darcy's one. So these small ones I actually buy. There's a, a cheaper brand on Amazon. I find that these are just as good. When we're done with the live, I'll go in and add some links. Um, these work really well. I use my P-Touch labeler to label everything. And I do use off-brand labels as well. I don't use the brother um, authorized, you know, official labels. And they also seem to work absolutely fine for me. And if I have stamps and matching dies, they go in the same envelope so that I know where they are. So for instance, if I had, um, I don't know if this one does. Yes, it does. So this one has balloon stamps and it has matching dies in the back. So if I have matching stamps and dies, they go in the same packet. So I'd always be able to find them. But all of my stamps, all of my dies get stored in here. I don't have separate sections. I have before had my stamps organized in different ways. So I've had um, my stamps organized by brand as I do now. And then I tried organizing by having like all of my birthday stamps together, all of my Christmas stamps together. For me, that didn't work because I could never find what I needed when I was working with a particular brand. So you can try that. If you just craft for fun, you might find that easier than if you're crafting, quite often I'll be like, okay, I'm making a card today for the Ellen Hudson blog, or today I'm working with waffle flowers, so I always need to be able to access those waffle flowers supplies. 
And if you do blog or you're on design teams, you'll find that you need your companies together. Whereas if you're just crafting for fun, you might find that doing it by category or doing it by occasion works better for you. So you can kind of work that out. For me, it really didn't work. And I liked having it by company and then within company doing it by category. That really works well for me. But I do like with my lawn fawn having all of the sets for, say, for instance, reveal wheel, having all of those together. That works really, really well for me. So that's one of my top tips is just making sure that things like particularly if you know if you've got lots of those interactive dies that you keep those together. That works really, really well. So um, the envelope system works well. The, Lord, the Eleanor Hudson really thick envelopes, they work really nicely too. Um, I did do a video before on different envelope options. So you can check those out. Brutus Munro do really nice um, cargo sleeves that are six by six. So if you're looking for a nice six by six envelope, again, I'll add some links for you afterwards, but these are the nicest ones. They're super, super thick, nice and strong for your background stamps, for your stencils. And they're the only six by six ones that I can now find that I really, really like. The ones that Amazon used to do are no more. So they are my top recommendation there. So for those of you who asked about stamp and die storage, that's how I store mine. You can of course get fridge bins with dividers and things in if you have a smaller space, um, but that's how I store them. So you can go smaller, store them in something like a rascog if you don't have uh, space to do drawers like I do, um, but I would still use exactly the same system. I used to have them in the fridge bins and in rascogs and I still have some in rascogs, uh, but everything else now goes in drawers. But same system, envelopes, P-touch labelled, and then whether you want them by occasion or by brand, you can choose. Uh, same system, just it depends on what scale and what uh, you want to actually store them in. So I hope you found that useful. Don't forget, to, of course, to hit subscribe, ring the bell, hit the join button to be part of our community. I'll add some links after I'm done here live so you can check out those items. And I'll see you again tomorrow for another review. And then we've got some really fun things coming next week, which you won't want to miss. So be sure to subscribe now. I'll see you all soon. Happy crafting. Bye.